Hello Drone Racers, I'm Mark and today on Drone Racer 101 we're going to review these. See these? Can you even see it? Is the antenna in the way? These are the EV200D goggles. I'll be honest, I didn't think these were ever coming out. I, I thought they were just going to be fake and never show up. But they're here. These are the production goggles. I bought these and I, I accidentally bought two pairs so I don't know what I'm doing with the others. Stay tuned on the channel for that. Anyway, we're going to do a first test flight with him. I've played with him on the bench a little bit. haven't done the review there. We'll get to that after I try them. But we're going to do some test flights, see how they look. I also have my SkyZone goggles, which are my standard daily goggles. So we'll see, get a recording, kind of see how they compare. Because I can't, I've got four real ACC Pagoda antennas on here. I've got the traditional, just omnidirectional Pagoda. I've got the traditional triple patch antenna, which is what so many people use. I've got the newer mini patch over here somewhere. Uh, I actually like this one a little better. It's smaller, so I don't hit it on as many things. And it comes with everything you need. You don't have to buy anything extra. And then I have the gargantuan 150 millimeter directional. Now, part of what I like about these is I would never put these on another set of goggles because this is very directional, but I kind of feel like I have a backup with the mini here um i mean really it's stupid but it, i'm doing this for the camera i'll be honest but hey i want to try it because maybe it'll be amazing who knows we'll find out so let's get the drone in the air and we'll go from there okay at first glance the picture itself out of these is spectacular i do have a little bit of light leakage there there's different foam i might be better off with the other foam there we go air mode and go so let's see range wise oh i've screwed up this model i totally forgot this model has uh, a lot of prop issues wow that video is really bad though wonder mark from the future here you're going to see that the goggles that i'm wearing actually break up a lot more than the goggles that i have set to the side while they're recording this is true both here and even more so i think when i swap and i'm wearing the sky zones and record the ev200ds over to the side i've experienced this before i can't say exactly why it is but i'm going to make sure in future testing when i do a larger shootout i will have them all sitting to the side i won't be wearing any of the goggles that are included with the test so you're going to see some breakup here on the ev200 when it's not on the sky zone but wait until i switch them and see what you think of the results there I'm at 25 milliwatt you Usually that's about what it's like. So not spectacular or terrible. If I'm at 200 milliwatt and something's wrong, then it's not good. So we'll go into features. This one is tramp on boss cam. Hey, yeah, I'm on 25 milliwatt. Let's go to 200. Now you probably can't hear it, but there is a noticeable fan sound coming from these all the time. And my fan isn't on. I don't have the fan on. Uh, it's just, you can just hear them. It's just kind of a constant hum, a constant whir, something that a lot of the other goggles don't have. So I don't know. But let's see how this does now on 200 milliwatt, which is much more appropriate for this. There we go. So yeah, look at the jello. We are not testing this model today. That is not the point. So there, 200 milliwatts with this. It's much better, much more appropriate. For video, I'm gonna say, the picture, I like the size a lot. I like the size a lot. I like the clarity a lot. It's very, very clear. The colors are overall very good. Um, there's a little bit of banding that I think is from maybe the goggles and not the quad. I'm gonna switch goggles here just to do a comparison with my sky zones and see. But video, video is very good with the appropriate power, especially where I'm at. Um, I am, I like, I am very happy with this picture. I wanna see what happens with my other goggles. I'm gonna switch out just to do a side by side. Okay, these are noticeably smaller. It's, uh, this picture is still really, really good, but they're, they are noticeably smaller and I've never, minded the size of these but it's a lot a lot smaller huh yeah same deal same exceptionally good picture quality same very very smooth quality my video connection oh was definitely better was definitely better a little bit better on the other goggles whoa yeah it was huh i oh it was way better it was way better so something's up, I think, with this quad. But now, seeing them side by side, my video was way, way better on 
the Eshines. Well, there it's. So there, you see what I mean? The EV200Ds in this case, where I wasn't wearing them, were crystal clear and the sky zones broke up. So it was the complete opposite. Whichever pair I was wearing were significantly worse than the other set. Okay, no, it's not. Where'd it go? I can't even see it. I, don't RSSI critical. I lost it. So that's how they look in the air. Let me show you what they look like on the bench. I've taken the antennas off just so they're not in the way. But as you know, we have four antenna connections, which are supposed to be for quad diversity. The cover came on. I haven't had to do anything here yet. It did come with the open side connections that has the opening. So if you want to put a third party module here, you can actually put a module in either side. So you'd probably put it on this side just because that's traditional. And then you'd have this open cover and opening there and you could put in whatever module you wanted theoretically. But you know what? These modules, they seem pretty good. I haven't done totally exhaustive testing yet, but if you watch the video, you would see whichever set of goggles I wasn't wearing was better. But while I was wearing them, my experience with these was better than what I had with my Sky Zones, which have been my go-tos. Now, the Sky Zones aren't the absolute pinnacle of quality when it comes to signal, but they're what I've been grabbing on a regular basis. And side by side, I think these smoke them pretty good. So I would say I would get the version with the modules and just use them. I wouldn't put the 150 millimeter antenna on it probably, but you can put whatever you want on here, which is really nice. You can get some really virtual options. Probably three of the minis and one Pagoda would be a really nice solution for this. Now it does not come with any antenna. So let me show you what it does come with because it comes with the two modules, but no antennas. And these are RPSMA antenna connections. So make sure you're aware of that. It did not come with the foam attached. It did come with a single goggle strap on it. It did not come with diopters and we'll cover that here in just a minute. So it did come with a battery and what's really unique about this is look how long that cord is because the battery goes in the back which a lot of people like and I often like but I don't like what you have to do. Most goggle batteries won't reach there. Well they took care of that so with this one you are ready to go. I would also use this with my Amways. I really, really like this. I want to get some more of them. I don't think at the moment you can order them. But this is a USB charging battery, which if you've been watching the channel for very long, you know I love that option. I'll probably need to do a full comparison with these to see how long this will go, but it worked out pretty well for me. I haven't run through it, but I haven't flown a lot yet. It came with a pretty nice case, but like most of these goggles, you're not going to be able to keep your antennas on while you carry them. So you're going to have to take that off, which is one of the reasons I really like this RPSMA instead of SMA. If you don't know why that's better, well, go watch my video right here-ish. Inside we have a foam liner to keep the goggles lined up, and we also have the other cover. I think this is the one that it should have on it. There's a reflection of everything in the room. Because it has no opening here, there's no opening on the sides. With the stock modules, these are the ones that it should probably have on it. I might change that, I might not. It doesn't really matter. It also comes with an HDMI cable. When I tested the FreeSky XSR SIM the other day with a simulator and I used go these goggles for it, this is the cable that I used. It's not maybe quite long enough and it is HDMI and mini HDMI, so it works. So if you like your Amways with the three straps on the goggles, this is actually another strap that you can add to it for additional adjustments. On the goggles themselves, there's a little strap opening here. You just put this through there, and then you're gonna have your three straps. And it connects to a point right here. I don't really want that, but if you want it, hey, there you go, it's good to go. Also came with two pieces of foam. This is a much thicker piece of foam than what I've got on there. I might switch it out. I picked the thinner foam. There you can see them side by side. I think I would like the thicker foam, so I think I'm probably gonna swap mine out for the thicker foam. I think it'll fit my face a little bit better and it'll block out the light a little bit more. It also came with a micro USB cable, two sets of instructions. This one shows you how to set the brightness, which I didn't have to change at all. It looked great out of the box. And another set that goes into all the details that I have also re-downloaded because I couldn't find it. And then a lens cleaner. The goggles themselves are pretty clean on top. We just have a mode button and a DVR button and then channel up and down. And these work really, really well for changing the channels and controlling the radio. We'll, uh, we'll show you that when we power them on. There's a lot here on the bottom, but it's pretty clean in the same case. So we have an AV port, HDMI port, that's where I connected that. Fan, I have not needed to use the fan. Actually, that's not true. I did use the fan a little bit when I used it with the simulator, but that was after I was wearing it for half an hour. The breathing on this was really good. IPD adjustments on both sides, they're independent. 
headphone jack, USB jack, which is used for upgrading the goggles, and you can also power them through this. And then the DCN, which is the same barrel connector as Fat Shark and everybody else has. These holes are for venting out the fan. So you may have noticed I have diopters in these, but these are not Fat Shark diopters. I have a number of sets of these Fat Shark diopters that come with negative two, negative four, negative six, and none of them looked right in these goggles. I was actually very disappointed with the screen of these at first because I just couldn't get any of those Fat Shark diopters to work right. It, it looked okay, but it just wasn't quite in focus. And I'll tell you, I had the same exact problem with the Amway Commanders. I wasn't sold on those for a while just because I couldn't get my eyes focused. For those, I end up getting these custom diopters from RHO Lens. They helped with that and they made a world of difference in here. One, they fit better. The slot that you fit them into is actually pretty small and these RHO lenses fit a whole, whole lot better. And then as soon as I put these in, they were it was crystal clear. That screen is so clear with these. It's absolutely perfect. My prescription is about a negative three, negative three and a quarter, somewhere in there. And the two, my two eyes are different. So I got these and I told RHO how great they were in these goggles because I didn't know if they knew if any of them were available in here yet. They were happy to hear that and they actually gave me a discount code to give to you guys. So if you guys have the same problem, you want to get some RHO lenses like I did for these, I need to do a specific review for these. But you can get 10% off. There's a link down in the description below where you can get those. And they made a world of difference for me. Just spectacular so this cover comes off I don't remember if it was on or off when I got it it's actually really easy you can pull the bottom down just a little bit so that comes off and you can get access to them one thing that is unique here is the diopters actually move with the lenses now I keep mine in all the way but if you move the lenses move with it this is also where the SD card is, and even though it's here and some people won't like where it's positioned, I'll say this one has been pretty easy. I haven't shot it across the room yet. Okay, do you see that? Um, so there's something you shouldn't do. When your lens cover on, there's just one slot, but when you take it off, look at that. There's, there's two slots, and I just stuck it in the wrong hole. Okay, I got super lucky and it just fell out. So that must not be a full slot that goes in there. It was just resting in there, and I'm not going to have to crack them open today. So part of what makes these special is the screens have a wide field of view. Isheen says it's 42 degrees and the resolution is 1280 by 720. So it's a really, really good resolution. It's not Fat Shark HDO quality, but it's really good. And I was really happy with it. You just saw the comparison. As I mentioned there, the screen resolution was noticeably bigger than what I have with my Skyzone O2s. It looked and just seemed really nice. So I'm hoping you can see this and I'm going to go through all the settings. So it defaults when you turn on to FPV mode. Then if you press modes one time, it will switch to HDMI 2D. So that's what I did when I was flying with the DVR. You want to switch it to HDMI 2D mode before you plug it in. And if you press it again, you'll have HDMI 3D mode. And then if you press it again, you have AV. And then you press it again, you have AV 3D mode. Then you press it one more time and you go back to your FPV mode. So that's if you press it just one click. If you press and hold, it will actually switch to race modes. So you have racing modes with four racers, six racers, eight racers, and these set you up on specific channels. I've never seen anybody use these. Then option three is if you press and hold down, not once, but for a long time until it beeps a third time. Now you have a scanning mode. And this scanner is, well, it's it's terrible. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. Let's see how long this takes before it actually finds something. And it beeps the whole time. The whole time it beeps. There it found a channel after all of that scanning. That was, it just felt like forever. It's after about a minute of scanning and beeping, it finally found something. And it stopped, and I don't know if that's the right channel or not. Not the best scanner. I probably just, I wouldn't plan on using that at all. That's one where I love my sky zones because the scanner on that is outstanding. So the other option with this mode button is to push it to the left and it will bring up the menu. There we go. So here we have the menu page. We can go, do brightness, contrast, saturation, and volume. Uh, I'd never had to do any of those. And then if I click it, it will go here. Might be more important to you. So here's where you set your camera type. So it defaults to auto and that's worked well for me so far. You also have PAL, 
NTSC or CCAM. I'm not exactly sure what that was. Auto has worked for me so far, so so far so good. It's also if you want it 16 by 9, if you want to change to 4 by 3, you can do that here. Um, it just basically removes the stretch. I also noticed though the field of view seemed a little bit better than on my sky zones, even on 16 by 9. I noticed that in the DVR, so I don't know. Then if you just don't touch it for five seconds, it will go back to your main screen. Now to enable the DVR, you push the DVR button and hold it, and hold it, and hold it, and hold it. There, finally up in the upper right hand corner, it brings up the recording option. And to start recording, you just push it one more time, and it will start recording. And it turns red, and you can see, and it records. To stop the recording, you click it again and it will stop the recording. This is supposed to have a capacitor in it, so if you unplug the battery accidentally, it will save the video. You do have to open it in something like VLC to open it and then convert it to a workable format. It will be corrupted, but it's repairable. So here with the DVR open now, we can press the DVR stick to the right and hold it to the right, and this will bring back the DVR playback. So hard to see this. So now we can click and review our recorded format video and just you can fast forward through it and you can change the speed that it plays back and you can go backwards so to me this is just so important if you lose a model to be able to get it i didn't have to use it to get my model back but it's here if you need it and it's a lifesaver now if you did unplug it and that file's corrupted this will not play it back there you have to open it up on a pc or something so two issues i have with the dvr First, the files were not natively editable in Premiere Pro. I had to go and convert all of these files into another format and then load them into Premiere Pro. Otherwise, I just had one still image. It didn't work at all. And then after I did that, issue two was the timing. If you noticed that my video was just a little off. Compared with the other DVR, which has always been perfectly synced up with my audio, that's one of the reasons I really like it, this video just wasn't quite right. Now maybe if I edit it again a different way and convert it a different way it will sync up but it was just just a little bit off and you know what as a reviewer that's really a problem. That's probably my biggest issue with them. As silly as that is as a reviewer that's a huge deal. So one of the things I pointed out in that video is, can you hear the fan? I don't know if you can hear the fan here. It, there's always, always a fan right inside. Now, if I flip the fan switch on the bottom, now there's the real fan running, which runs through your eyes and, and sucks the air out and keeps moisture down. It's only a little bit louder, so it's not like it gets loud, but it's nice I didn't have to make an extra connection. That's probably one of the nicer things with it using a single barrel connection usually if I start to have fog I want to fix it while I'm in the air so to be able to reach up and flip the switch right here that's really nice just flip it to one and you're good to go so there I just swapped out for the other foam and I'll say I do like the thicker foam a lot better it covers around here and then I wear my goggles on my forehead a lot this is actually gonna be one of the comparisons can you wear your goggles on your forehead because I want to be able to walk around like this. It's, it was okay with the other foam. It is even better with the thicker foam. So are these a contender for the $300 goggle category? Absolutely. The video, the image in them was really good. The quad diversity seemed good. I didn't have every set out there to compare them with, but side by side, they did pretty darn well for good enough. They did as well as I would expect. The fact that they come with the receivers, they don't come with antennas, so you do have to keep that in mind. Some of the others do come with antennas. So price comparison though, worthy contender for there. Are they fat shark killers? No. Are they Amway killers? No. I mean, they're all good goggles. The V1s, the Dominator V3s, all in the same price range. The Skyzone O2s, they're all great goggles. So which one's the best? It's kind of up to you. If you need a DVR to post online and have it sync up with audio, no, these these aren't those. That, that didn't work. The DVR was okay. The quality looked okay. It was a little bigger resolution than with my Sky Zones, but the timing issue would be the killer for me. I, I can't use goggles that don't have the timing that syncs up right. I've had a whole lot worse. These were, I mean, it was maybe by the end of a five minute video, it was half a second off. So it was only a little bit off, but it was still enough that that would be a dish issue for me. 
They're some of the best looking goggles that I have though. The video, the image quality in them, just looking through them, these were some of the the best. I would I, I don't have HDOs. I don't have HD threes. In that price range though, they might be the best looking if if how it looks on the screen is the most important to you. Yeah, it, it might be these. I need to see them all side by side. So if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below. I want to know what is the most important factor in choosing goggles for you. Is it screen quality? Is it DVR? Is it battery convenience? Is it warranty? And feel free to list more than one. Everything that's important to you kind of ranked. I want to know what is most important to you guys. So when I do these comparisons, I can take all that into account. Because warranty is a questionable thing on these. With fat sharks, they just kill everybody on warranty. What happens if these fail? I don't know. Well, I guess we'll find out. Or hopefully we don't find out. Hopefully they're super reliable and it's not an issue. So until next time, remember, I'm, I'm going to check this. See this? These are my Amway commanders. And if I put this battery back here, oh yeah, it's perfect. Look at that.